Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter here. This morning, or I guess this afternoon, if it is in, uh, in Germany, uh, we're talking with Jonathan Mueller uh, about his upcoming talk, The New Library on the Block, and just about C++ now in general. And you know, you'll notice I've got the, the green shirt on as Jonathan does too. And so, you know, that'll lead me to the first question. So what year and how many years did you volunteer? So um, I attended my first C++ conference in 2016, meeting C++ in Berlin. And there I met John Karp for the first time. And he said I should definitely volunteer at C++ now because it's such a good opportunity to attend the conference and meet all the people. So I attended there the first time in 2017. Um, then I also volunteered again in 2018. In 2019, I made the big mistake of deciding to go to CppCon instead of C++ now. Uh, I just wanted to see that conference and thought I could go to C++ now next year, but then the pandemic hit, so I actually haven't attended C++ now since 2018, which is a shame. Oh, wow. That's for some reason I, I, for some reason I had in my mind you were there last year. Yeah, which, no, I know. I didn't which is it. kind of bad because it's not a big conference, right? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. But for, for my defense, it was my first year helping run the volunteers, so it was a very busy year for me. <laughs> no, no, I, I really missed it. I'm looking forward to coming back. Okay, so I have to back up and say you made the mm -hmm. mistake of going to CppCon. Was was the mistake because you could only do one conference per year, or uh, the mistake was that I could only do one conference the year, and I picked CppCon over C++ now, which is well, well, one conference in the US. Well, I mean, at least I will say this: like to go 2019, because I do remember that year. That was at least one of our better years at the Gaylord when it came to CppCon. Yeah. So, um, and it's it's coming back too. You know, if anything, if it comes back anything like C++ now does, um, mm -hmm. you know, last year we had 70 uh, attendees in total and this year we're pretty much almost sold out. I think there's only a few spots left. Um, and so, you know, hopefully the rest of the conferences in the world start going that way too with on-site because it's, I don't know, I at yeah. least me, there's something different about having everyone there and around, is there not? Yeah, yeah, like the in-person conferences are so much better. Like I didn't really attend any online conferences except the ones that I had a prior speaking engagement. Like I submitted the talk and then it turned out online. Like I just don't like the experience. So when did you do your first talk at C++ now? In 2017, I thought. Oh, wow. So you yeah. volunteered and did... Yeah, I wanted to ensure that they picked me as volunteer, so I also submitted the talk. <laughs> and how was that experience giving a talk? I mean, just, you know, comparative to other places, everyone, you know, the... Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So I don't actually remember that much about 2017, mm -hmm. but I do remember that my talk about 2018, uh, I gave a talk about like and the ways you can view various pointer types and whether you should have an optional GWF and what that, that does mean. And like the discussion around the talk, um, during the talk and after the talk and the breaks, it, it was such, like, you learn a lot, even as a speaker. Yeah. It, yeah. Unique experience there. That is, I think, the difference compared to CppCon, where it's more you're delivering the talk. And yeah. you might have people come up and ask questions at the end, but it's not so much the back and forth throughout. It's yeah. Not, yeah. It's not yeah. as much the conversation, I don't think. Yeah. So what is one of your favorite parts about coming to Aspen then? Uh, what I like about Aspen is that it's such a small conference, mm -hmm. like half of the people there are giving a talk or something like that. So it's like really small people, you get to know them over the week, you can spend them. Like when I was at CppCon, there were like so many people there in 2019 mm -hmm. and it was like a completely different experience because yes. like you barely got to see the people again when you met them once in the hallway because there are just so many and that C++ now you just basically spent the entire week together. Yeah, I, you know, that's, I want to say if I recall, I think CppCon in 2019, we had almost 1500 people. So yeah, yeah. 10 times the size difference. That is absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. So can I ask how, you know, because you work for ThinkCell and... Uh, I started it uh, a couple of weeks ago, yes. Oh, okay. So it's, that's yeah. recent. Oh. Yeah. So I was going to say, because I remember ThinkCell all the way back to, uh, 
when we were still with CPPCon in Maidenbauer, um, <laughs> and they gave out the bags with the battery packs in them, which we still gave out last year. <laughs> How do you yeah. like being there? Is it uh, do you get to use your C plus plus a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah, I get to like like I've been there only a couple of weeks, and most of them I had to prepare a talk that I suddenly had to give uh, <laughs> next week at the conference. Um, but yeah, it's uh, they they've got this um, core library that I'm working on, and I basically get to maintain it, work on it, improve it. So That's yeah, cool. it's been great so far. Nice. So. You got a talk that you're going to do this year, and it's called the new library on the block. Yeah. So, so tell us about the talk. Yeah. So, um, this actually, I'm actually giving two talks. Oh, um, excellent. At the conference. Yeah. So this is the talk that I only learned about that I'm going to give it like two weeks ago. Um, so <laughs> oh, um, this is the um, so Thinkcell has um, an alternative, like like an extension to the standard library, similar to Boost. Okay. And um, it's my job to maintain and work on that library. And uh, in this talk, I will present it, uh, some of the features they have, which are like, like there are a lot of things to fix uh, and improve C++ as a language. Mm -hmm. um, we use some facilities there to work on like issues or problems in the language. Um, we also have like an alternative range implementation. Um, not because it sort of like predates uh, standard ranges and we sort of went in a different way um, and there and I'll talk about the trade-offs there and how okay. it compares. So let me say that back. So the, the ranges, so this library has been around for a bit and hence you're yeah. saying it predates the ranges that's in the standard, but there's still yeah. a lot of benefit to using it comparatively. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a couple of, like we made a different choices in uh, various places. We made simpler choices. Um, because we don't need to be as generic as maybe like the standard library has to be because we like work in our own code base. Right. Um, and yeah, so it's a bit of a different trade-off. It's sort of like um, similar to like standard ranges, which started out with like boost ranges. Okay. And then Eric went in a like extended a bit. Um, we also started with boost ranges, but went in a slightly different direction. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. So it's funny, you're, you know, you're telling me that this talk, you only have a couple of weeks to prep on because the last talk that I gave was in 2018 and I'd submitted it to CPPCon. It didn't get selected, but then a couple weeks before um, before the conference, John turns around and he messages me and he's like, hey, do you think you could have that talk ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this also happened to me with the other talk I'm giving at C++ now. Mm -hmm. So um, this is um, like, uh, I already gave um, the talk, uh, as it's a 60 minute version at meeting C++. Okay. And I originally submitted it for C++ now again as a 45 minute talk. Um, it's about various ways you can write like, um, essentially like when you have a switch statement in a loop, mm -hmm. so you want to dispatch between various branches, how, how you can make that fast. And I talk about profiling and look at assembly and things like that. So I submitted it again as a 45 minute talk to C++ now. Um, I figured it would be easy, like it's a 60 minute talk, I just cut 15 minutes out and have a talk ready. Um, they accepted it, and then like like a couple of weeks ago, they asked me, "Hey, can you also do like a ninety minute talk version of that talk?" So now I'm giving a ninety minute version of that talk, and like on the same day, uh, Arno, my boss, asked me to give his talk at C plus plus now as well. So it's been a bit busy <laughs> with talk preparation the last couple of weeks. Well, at least at least you're not busy before the conference starts, right? So by the time you come, you'll do a couple talks, and the rest will seem like a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, my, uh, like I have a talk on Friday, so. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah. so when it comes to C++, I saw when I was looking through YouTube, you have a, mm -hmm. you did a talk that was comparing Rust to C++. And so. The coroutines, yes. I, I got to ask, so what do you think about Rust as compared to C++ when it comes to language? Because in our company, you know, for the stuff that we do with credit card processing, most of that is in C++, but there's been some push to do a little bit more in Rust. Mm -hmm. How do you think they compare? So um, I like two things about Rust. Um, the first is their trade system. Mm -hmm. So um, like the what we have to do in C++ with like when you do like customization points where you can do ADL, so you can do trade specializations, everything is like a hack. And in Rust, they've got a really clean way to like extend stuff for, for your own types. 
I really like I really wish C++ had a language facility for that. And then the second thing I like about Rust is its standard library, mm -hmm. because they started like from scratch and didn't start with like the C library and then added more and more stuff on top. And now over like the last 30 years, we've got like various layers of standard library using different idioms and they don't really fit together. And I really like the Rust standard library. I don't really like, it's nice that they have this safety features, which is like Rust's main ideal, but this isn't really like something it's not, it's not really an issue when I program personally. So right. I, but I, I really love the um, trade system and the standard library, which is for me personally, the killer features of Rust. I gotcha. Yeah. When I, the little bit that I started doing in Rust, it's like, I can see where the safety is there, but it, <laughs> it still seems to me that just, you know, you have safety in C++. It just depends on whether you want to try to shoot your foot off or not. Right. It's, yeah. you, know, you can get outside of the, outside of the fencing if you want and then for whatever reasons you take that risk if you know what you're doing or you don't yeah yeah it's like the the escape hatches in c++ are less obvious and mm -hmm. you've got like always like it's annoying that essentially when you have a reference you're never entirely sure whether that still points to valid memory and with rust you have that guarantee um but i like i don't write code that's the that one on like critical system stuff right right so when it crashes, like I, well, I debug it, right? And yeah. then I fix it and it's not a big deal. Yeah. But yeah. No, our code's kind of similar. I, I don't have to worry about, you know, I, it's not like it's a medical system. Yes, yeah. somebody doesn't want their credit card to be denied when they, when they do a swipe, but it's not gonna, you know, cause an airplane to drop out of the sky. We'll just restart the binary and the next time it should go through. So <laughs> um, I feel what you're saying there. So is there anything else you want to add before we before we call it a day? I'm really looking for the conference. Um, I've missed C++ now. I haven't been there in five years. I'm looking forward to being there again. So with that in mind, we're, you know, less than a, yeah, less than, less than a week out. I mean, I know that we're leaving here in another two days to head up to Aspen because yeah. we're down here in Arizona. Um, I'm flying up on Saturday. Ah, yeah. So... Yeah. Well, I will see you then on Saturday in the evening. And if nothing yeah. else, there's the reception Sunday. And uh, again, I appreciate you taking time with me today and, no and look forward to seeing you at the conference. You too. Have a great evening. Afternoon, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to get my time zones right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye-bye.